you know, it's, it's not a, a radio letter that goes to, to people. It's a personal letter and um, it's uh, and, and personal emails uh, to, to people. It's, uh, it's uh, the approach that I've taken. Um, maybe I might get a, a wider field through a, and there's some lovely people. I've met some lovely people here, here in, uh, in, in, sorry, in New Orleans who are great promoters of, of the style of music that we do. But I kind of felt that I wanted to, it's a bit like, um, I remember saying this in another interview, that when I recorded electronic uh, music originally, a lot of the sequences, I just did it by hand. You know, I didn't do MIDI or anything like that or press a button and, and it all did it. And the, then the, the uh, interviewer was kind of a little bit surprised and you know, I kind of said, oh, he says, but I did, you know. Um, and then I realised, well, to be up with the big boys, you've got to do it a little bit slightly, you know, a little bit more sensible and, and do it slightly differently. So I've always tried to do most of it myself. And, and in a way, by doing it yourself, you learn, you know, how, how to do things, you know. And, you know, as I said, I'm not the, the greatest master in the world, but, you know, I'm not Bob Ludwig or whatever his name is, but um, I, I think I produce a relatively, you know, pretty good quality product. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. In terms of your gear, you always, you like analog, analog, digital, you do a combination of both. What do you? you, you look, I, I don't have a lot of a, a lot of equipment, uh, Claudio. I have uh, two core Karmas and a, a Yamaha MX49. And I've got a, a new core Wave State, which is still in the box. And I've had it for about six months. I just haven't had the time or the room here to kind of Put rearrange it. Together. And I've got an, I'm looking here at the moment, I've got an Archeria Mini Mini Brute 2, which again is still in the box. Um, but I have a, a lot of um, soft synths, a lot of VST, virtual instruments. Um, I have a very, very good collection of virtual instruments. So um, I, I either play directly through to the uh, MX49, the Yamaha, or through the Core Karma and, uh, for the, as, a, as, a MIDI, as a MIDI controller. And uh, you know, the strings that I use uh, on most of my music are from the Core Karma, a, a sound that I created myself. And I always go back to it because I just, I just find it's the, the best that suits the ele electronic music uh, as well, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, you, you, right now you have, remind me, you got done over 30 albums, right? Yeah, I, I've lost count, but it is it's about 30 or 32, 33, something like that, yes. Yeah, so. My God, that's amazing, man. What's, so what's the motivation to keep on going? Uh, just the love of music. Mm. I, I just, I just, I'm always in, uh, you know, there's got to be something going on because, I mean, where do these melodies and ideas come from? Well, is it from me, myself? Well, I think there's got to be other, you know, hopefully Edgar's up there helping me and Van Gallus and Klaus all helping me. But, you know, I'm sure it's just the process. It's a real, it's, a, it's challenging. Sometimes it's frustrating. Um, but you kind of sit down and you feel a little bit inspired, you know, you, you feel, you know, motivated to do it. I mean, I, I go through patches. I mean, I, I haven't really sat down at my keyboards and played for probably about three or four weeks, but that's because I've been focusing on getting a new album out. True. And, and you know, it, it's, it's not an easy process to get an album out when you do it yourself. It's really quite time consuming and, you know, uh, demanding. And, I've just released it, what is it now, just over a week ago, and I'm kind of coming down from that process, and very shortly I'll get back into, you know, what I love to do, which is sitting down and just improvising and thinking, oh, that sounds good. That might that might be a good chorus or a verse or a good sequence or, you know, that sound is great. I have to remember that for the next track. Yeah, yeah. the motivation's always there. I mean, we're alive and I'm, I'm alive and I'm breathing and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I live in I live in a beautiful part of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you think that if you look back at your life, you end up? Do you think you end up picking music, or you, I think uh, music choose you instead? Well, Claudia, I, I've always had the love of music, as I mentioned earlier. I, 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 you know, my sister had forty fives when she was, you know, in her later teens, and. Uh, I was very, very young at that stage and I would sit up against her bedroom door and listen to the Beach Boys and the Beatles and Dave Clark Five and um, Helen Shapiro and all those people. And I just loved music and buying music and feeling it. So I, I think that, that that motivation is always 
that music is always going to be part of my life. And uh, whether it be listening to the radio or whether it be putting on one of my CDs, not my CDs, but one of the, my CDs in my collection uh, that I that I listen to, um, you know, it's really music is the sound sounds stupid, but it's the soundtrack of your life, isn't it? I mean, some days oh, absolutely, you know, absolutely, you're going. And um, I often say that Tangerine Dream or Van Gallus really is the sound soundtrack of my life because even when in my years of studying at the University of Queensland here and uh, the, the Queensland Institute of Technology, um, when I was writing assignments, I'd always have their music playing behind me or similar types of music playing behind it. And it filled that void, you know, from hearing the cars going, you know, outside, you just had this type of ambience around you. And I think it helped with, um, you know, being able to focus on what you had to do in writing an assignment. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I ran I ran marathons for many years. I'm glad I was quite a, quite, quite a good marathon runner. And going to every, every race... <laughs> I'd be in the car and I'd be listening to Underwater, Underwater Sunlight, the um, uh, Tangerine Dream album. And wow. Every time, you know, uh, this, and it just gave me that that inspiration. That album it just really inspired me on my drive to where I, wherever I was going to race. So, um, you know, that's really showing that it was a part of part of my life. You know, oh, oh, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. What about, uh, have you ever done uh, music for, you know, films or television kind of stuff? Well, look, I, I say in my uh, my uh, bio that music for film and television, but that's more the fact that what I compose is, is stuff which is suitable for that. I've actually uh, entered some competitions. We used to have a, a film festival here in Australia called Tropfest. It was a short film festival and it's quite well known around the world and they would have a, uh, a competition as part of that called TROP score T-R-O-P score, TROP score and uh, a number of years I entered um, you know uh, submissions for that and I still have them here and, and go back to them every now and again and uh, to be perfectly honest it was a challenging experience I mean people say to me boy your music would be great in this film or this film, it would be but I think the pressure kind of gets put on if you've actually got a film in front of you <laughs> and you've got to compose. Maybe it's better to do it the way Tangerine Dream did with Sorcerer. I mean, they had already composed the, you know, they composed the music without even without even seeing the film in that that's, particular. That's period. unbelievable. Yeah, I I, 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 I I saw a documentary for William Freakin uh, explaining yeah. that, and it, it's amazing how they did it without even seeing the movie. Well, it's going, it's going to, the movie is going to be about this and that, and it's going to be filmed in the jungle. How can they put it together? It's amazing. Yeah, it is. I think these days, I mean, you know, what, what I was told was if you really want to get into film, you really need to connect up with some of the students who are, who are learning film and, you know, say, look, I, I can do this for free for you. And, and when they actually become producers, directors, whatever, um, they they then rely on the people who they've used in the past. But I also think that the the uh, film scoring, you know, community is quite a niche community. Uh, I don't know how easy it, it really is to get into it. And yeah, very difficult, actually. Yeah, if the opportunity came came around, yeah, uh, you know, and someone said, well, "I'd like you to do this," or "I'd like to," I'd like it if they said, "I'd love this piece of music." <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, if it, the opportunity ever came, I'd certainly give it a shot. Um, but they'd have to understand that it's, a, you know, being a, a first-timer with doing a, something that big, that, it, you know, there might be challenges. But, um, hey, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I want to concentrate in the, in the album, two albums, the 2020, When Eternity Touches Time. That's a beautiful, man. That's a very beautiful. You're very humble. I know you're, you know, you're well known out there, and uh, I, I listened last night. You know, you sent me some material. I went to a bad camp or Spotify. I don't remember, and uh, you know, I put my headphone. I drink a beer last night, and uh, it's, a, it's a, it's a, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful piece, man. Okay. How, how was it? Feel free to elaborate on the process of putting that album together. And 
Yeah, look, it's, it's pretty similar. To, I'll just I'll just grab it out here while I, while I look at the tracks. I always forget what the title of the tracks are, you know, because you kind of name those at the end. But um, that's right. That's right. That's right. I, I, it, look, it's certainly the same process, um, Claudio. I, I had a number of tracks that were electronic, more up tempo or melodic type tracks that I that I could choose from, and I and I had a theme. I'm always looking out for song titles. Now, whether it be in lyrics of a song or words from a book, um, from a prayer, from, from whatever, and I, I, I get two words that I think, you know, for example, eternal changelessness. I mean, that's from a, a particular prayer that, that I know of. And uh, I think, you know, that really is wonderful, you know, um, wonderful words. And I think there's another one, uh, perpetual epiphany. Um, it, it, they're just things that I hear. And I've got a little, I'm, I'm pointing up here, but there's a, there's a pile of, you know, about this high of notes that I write. And when I come to write, you know, put an album together, I think, yeah, they really sound good. And this one was based on, I, you know, the, you know I, I've, had, I've had, I've been very blessed in my life, Claudio, that I have a great family and I have had some wonderful friends, you know, and most of them were old friends and, you know, most of them have passed on. And, you know, and I've been carer for quite a few people as well, two or two people over the years. And they kind of, this, this album was released in 20, which was just after one of those friends of mine passed away. So that's where the, you know, eternity touches time kind of comes into it. So that was the theme of the album was about life and what's, what's beyond. And, uh, you know, and that's how some of the, the song titles came, came about. But it kind of came together very, very well. It it, uh, it actually it was one of the ones that did win an award, uh, Claudio, the last year I think in July, um, Zone Music Reporter Awards. It was because of COVID, none of the awards were actually physically taking place, but um, it was all done online. But it was really lovely to to get an award uh, for that album. Um, it, it just um, you know it, it was not it was nice to, to receive it. But it, you know it's a, it's a nice album. It's got some. You know, it's got a combination of melodic electronic as well as, you know, some Berlin school and, you know, it, it, it kind of covers a, quite a few bases, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it's a beautiful, no, it's a very beautiful album. And the, the latest one, uh, the latest project, Somewhere in Between, uh, it's yeah. an excellent album as well. Feel free to allow in on how that album came together. And begin, you can, how, what's, what's the meaning Somewhere in Between? In between? What, what it means to you? Well, 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 a little, a little bit like, you know, when eternity touches time in a way. It's kind of like, you know, between here and 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 into the eternity. It's kind of like, and a lot of times it's like where we are in our in our own minds. I mean, sometimes we're confused, we're happy, we're sad, we're you know, we're grieving, we we feel isolated with COVID. So it's kind of finding that spot somewhere within 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 your soul or within your your own body of where you're where you are and where you feel comfortable. And uh, that was really the, the concept um, behind the album. Actually, the, the title, Somewhere in Between, I, I, I always, one of my favourite movies from the, I think it was the 80s or late 70s, was The China Syndrome. And Stephen Bishop sang the theme song. And it was called Somewhere in Between. And I always loved that title. And I knew at some stage down the track, I mean, it's slightly different. I put a hyphen in between the in and the between, but <laughs> that's right. Um, it, it's it, and that that in itself gives it a slightly different connotation as well. But um, it's it's just that I might hear something, and I write it down. Um, but that the that the, the album again, I wanted variety in the music, and and as I said, some people may not like the idea that there's so much variation in it, but it's my album. And that's the way that I would like to hear an album, that there is a little bit of, look, you know, Berlin School's great, but, you know, 70 minutes of Berlin School, you can take or leave. Um, and, um, I mean, I, I do like it at certain times, but sometimes you want to put on an album where you think, oh, you can think about a track or you think, oh, that's a lovely melody. And then there's a more deep track. There's a little bit of variety through it. You know, maybe good driving music. One of my friends says, oh, I love listening to your Yesterday Passing album when I drive, you know, and I think, well, that's nice. Keeps him awake, doesn't put him to sleep. <laughs> that's right. Is that, is that, man, is that, I really like that album. I have listened to that album probably three or four times already in the last 24 oh, really? hours. Yeah, oh, that's good. 
that's a masterpiece. And yeah, and I wonder the hyphen in between the in and between. I knew that was meaningful. I mean, people do the stuff on purpose. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it's... it's yeah, I think, I, I mean, it's... I mean, these days, probably most people would just you know, not use the hyphen, but I, I, I think it, it just it just changed it um, slightly for me to to, to have that, and um, you know, even even to uh, uh, even trying to get that up on you know through CD Baby, there was a struggle trying to get the hyphen in there and the, to get the capitals in the right place, but that was part of the challenge. Right, <laughs> yeah. I fought for it and I got it, which which is the way that I which is the way that I wanted it to be, you know. Yeah. When, when, when do you think that music come from in in in, in general in your opinion? Uh, hmm. well, yeah, uh, I mean, for me personally or generally, Clarence? To me, to you, not to you. Yeah, yeah to, to me. Uh, look, I, I you know, I'm very much a spiritual person. I love the the nature here where, where I live, but I very much believe in. You know the fact that there are there are beings, angels, and and you know loved ones who are helping you out, and I, and I think that you know uh, <clears throat> why is it that there are discoveries of you know medications to fix this particular arm are done at the same time around the world? Why are they kind of found at the same time? There's got to be something uh, helping with it. I'm sure I'm sure it's got to do with ourselves. Our, you know you know the fact that. Um, this is what I want to do and this is what I enjoy doing. So you're kind of open to ideas and hearing. And um, and I'm sure that what I've heard and listened to in the past through my CD and record collection and through radio, that y you you kind of learn from that. You know, it, it's quite funny, Claudio, I released a, a, Chris, a Christmas uh, track called um, Another Christmas Eve on one of my albums, which I'm trying to remember which album it was. But anyway, I, I then re-released it, I re remastered it and re remixed it a few, about two, last year, I think it was, two years ago. Um, and uh, it was funny that one of the ladies who reviewed it for the album, uh, she said, uh, it's a really beautiful track. And she said, and the bridge, he even um, borrows from Packerbell's Canon, Canon in D. And I thought, oh, my goodness. I did too, and I didn't realise it that you know this particular bridge, the bridge in the song was actually part of Packerbell's canon. I felt so embarrassed that you know that I had borrowed it without even acknowledging it, it, yeah, without realising it, you know, and it was someone else picking up on it, you know, um, that um, uh, was was really quite, um, you know. Uh, I was a little bit shocked, first of all, but then I thought, oh, well, you know, it, that's, that's life. And, and maybe, you know, some songs do sound a little bit similar at certain times. Absolutely. Do you believe in, do, do you believe in life after this life? Oh, yeah, very much so. Oh, yeah. Have yeah. you seen the other side? Uh, have I seen it? I, I suppose, you know, when I'm sleeping, I, I travel there all the time, uh, Claudio. But uh, I really feel that the, the very first, I think I told you about that I was, when I first got into music, I was a little bit, a little bit uh, down. I was quite depressed at the time, and I, I had very clear, a very clear advice. You know, um, whether it be my angels, but you've got to do something to get out of this. I said, "What do I do? Music? Oh yes, I love music. No, <laughs> you've got to, you've got to compose music." Yeah, right. So it was very clear. Yeah. Me, whether that was my mind or what, I firmly believe it was. You know. Um, some form of uh, angelic assistance um, mm. that helped me, and I opened myself here to whatever might be there to to help uh, me, we, me with my music now. And um, you know, there might be people that don't don't believe that, but I firmly I firmly do, and that's makes me comfortable, and it helps me in life generally, and it helps me with my music. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one one day one day we'll have a conversation about that. I. I, I like you. I, I have, let me put it to you that way. I have seen the other side I, yeah. and I have experienced it too, you know. So, uh, lucky man. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, I grew up in a, I grew up in a Catholic family, right? In South America. I was born in Chile and I came to the United States to study after high school. And, uh, I grew up in a, you know, with the Jesuits. I went to a Catholic school. They told me this thing and that thing and that thing. And then, 
through experience of my life, uh, I began sensing things, experiencing things, and everything of the most, the mayor of the stuff that the Catholic Church told me about, you know, good and evil and this or that. If you don't do good things, you go to hell or that. <laughs> That's a nonsense, you know. It's a, hell doesn't exist at all. Heaven doesn't exist. You don't. You don't. You're not banished or rewarded for this. And we we come from that particular life to do a specific things, and you know we you know we are energy, if you will, uh, having a human experience it has nothing to do with it. They really die. It doesn't exist. It's, it's a myth, you know. We don't really die. We, when we cross over, you know, family members are waiting for us and, and so on and so forth. And then uh, we came to this particular earth to do a specific thing. And, uh, you know, I believe in reincarnation. I, there's so much research of reincarnation mm -hmm. and uh, that, that exists. And uh, uh, God as a, as a person perhaps doesn't exist. Uh, more than a genetic way, a he or she or it. You know, I, I don't know that. But the other thing that I, to a lot of research, uh, I end up finding out and contacting different people to explain to me. And when we, you know, we 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 pick our parents, we end up selected at the time that we are born. We are given the option of three or four families, and depending on where you you come to this particular planet to do something very specific to learn about that or to learn about that or whatever, you know, we, we end up picking our, our family, our bringing and so on. No, it isn't an accident. So. Yeah, but I, I agree. I, I was born, I was raised uh, in a Roman Catholic family to um, Claudio and uh, I continue to, to go to masses and, um, but I have expanded out into the more, you know, the, the spiritual church type of things as well. And that's, that's where I first, you know, it was around about that time when I first got my inspiration with music as well. So I think that that helped with the process. Um, and uh, for many years, um, the last um, when I when I mentioned when eternity touches time, I said I was a carer of an old friend. He was actually a priest for sixty five years. So um, I've had the connection through his church. And uh, when he passed away, I had to hold things together for twenty months uh, at the church, um, leading. Lay services for 20, 20 months uh, every Thursday and every Sunday. Um, so I, I certainly know, you know a fair bit about the church, and I was educated by the Marish brothers here in in uh, in, in, in in Queensland. And uh, but yes, I, you know, as you, as you go through life, you realise that some of the stuff that you were told, not you know, some of it's good, um, and some of it's you know, it was there for a purpose. <laughs> Uh, and you get a greater understanding as you progress through life. But some people do, some people don't. Some people don't believe, and you know that's of course their their right too. But I feel a little bit sorry when uh, you know people don't have the um, thoughts about uh, you know th what happens when you die. I remember an old mate of mine who was in his nineties and his wife died you know, five years earlier, and uh, he John was. Uh, Lovely fellow, really sweet fellow, uh, but you know he'd been with his wife kind of seventy five years or something. That they they were, they were twelve when they first started dating, you know, and uh, and he said oh, she's gone, she's dead, she, it's nothing. And I said John, that's not the case. She's looking after you now, you know. And I think towards the end, I think I finally I started to convince him. I think <laughs> I'm sure he's up there now having a great time. <laughs> of course, of course, that's uh, that's what life is about, right? <laughs> Uh, man, your your journey in many ways has been like a good bottle of wine. If you drink wine, you you know you're getting better with you know with you're getting better with with time and, and more refined your music. So it's uh, I'm glad you you have chosen that path. And you know from the first record that I'm glad that you have chosen the the, the path of music. You know from 202 to now 2022, 20 years later, 30 or so, 33 albums. Uh, yeah. you're, you're doing well, man. I'm, I'm better looking now, uh, Claudio. <laughs> I don't know about that. But <laughs> now, well, look, look, I, I haven't led a wild, exciting life, but I've led a life that I've enjoyed. You know, as I mentioned, I'm very much a homebody, but I do what I, I like to do in my life. Um, and that's really 
all you can ask for is that I've got a great family. I've got amazing friends who have passed and those who are with me now. I'm very blessed. I, you know, I have enough money to buy some lovely computer gear to do my, my recording and, you know, I've got some abilities and skills to, to put it down. You know, can't get, can't get any better than that. And I've got a beautiful house here with, you know, wallabies coming down and birds coming down every day to see me. So can't complain. <laughs> yeah. It, I, Looking back in, on your musical career, what moment, if you can pick two or three that are important to you, or any any regrets or things you would have done differently? That's with the music. Uh, yeah. yeah. In, in your life, I, suppose, yeah. I suppose that initial gym, you've got to go and do something to change your life. Because if that, you know, I think oftentimes. It's really what's happened in your in your past that kind of leads you to where you are. I mean, yeah. I know that there's different pathways you could have taken, and I mean, I, I I might have taken this path a lot earlier if I wasn't a carer for someone for certain years or what. But that's part of my experience. That's 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 that was part of my life. Um, there's certainly no regrets, and I don't think I would have taken any, any different any different approach with it. But um, I think it all has fallen into place. That initial thing, and definitely, and I suppose um, some of the contacts I've had who have kind of given me a little bit of inspiration. Um, I mean, before I went international, I actually did send an album overseas to where I used to, where I buy CDs from now, CD services in Scotland, and they did reviews. And the fellow who did the reviews there, uh, Andy, was also on radio, and he actually played one track of mine uh, from a very early from. Century, I think it is, or Orion, which is, which is on Bandcamp. And it was about five or six years later. That would have been in about, I don't know when that would have been, probably about 2010. And it was 15, 10, five years later when I, I went international. Um, and I think it was, um, uh, I think the first track was, the first in, a track that was played internationally after that was on Echoes, John Diliberto's Echoes program. And that was another inspiration to get up, to actually hear yourself on the radio, you know, for that first time. You think, oh, my goodness, that's me on the radio. Wow. <laughs> I still, even, even to this day, if I happen to hear one of my pieces of music, I think, oh, goodness, who's yeah. that? <laughs> Good um, for you, man. Yeah. yeah and, and look, uh, what else? I, I, definitely, you know, the, the awards that I won, but, you know, awards aren't, everybody's cup of tea and, you know, um, I don't go go out of my way to, to get them, but it's lovely when you, you are presented, you know, with with with, uh, with things like that. It's, it's It gives you a little bit more inspiration and motivation to continue on and getting feedback from people, you know. it's uh, I, I, I have people review my music and I've had some great reviews. I've, I've had um, mo most of them have been good. One of them uh, was I took it on board is very good advice uh, and I think that that's it, helped me with it where it wasn't wasn't very positive about the album but um, it kind of gave me thought you know maybe I need to think about this a little bit more and uh, so having you know just even someone if they if they email you saying hey I really love this track or this you know and one of, <coughs> excuse me one of the really lovely ones <coughs> early on was, was a lady who said to me that her sister, when she was dying of cancer, she wanted really the whole room cleared and she just wanted some music played. And it was my, I think it was the first Light album that she, my very first album that she wanted to play. And I thought, well, that was, that was a lovely thing. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah, yeah amazing. That was, that was, you know, I've heard a few little stories like that, but that was the one that really sticks with me. Yeah. Man, good. what do you do for music when, what do you do when nothing music related? What do you do for fun? There's nothing to do with music. Uh, Hiking and uh, well, look, outdoors. I mean, years, as I said, years ago, I was a marathon runner. So that was, you know, running was always, uh, you know, training. And I was very serious. I was very serious about the marathons. These days I do, I do walk and I do like to swim. Uh, um, I don't swim as much as I used to, but I do walk every morning. And it's my opportunity just to, you know, think and talk and, and uh, uh, do a bit, a bit of reading. Um, geez, 
it's interesting. What do I do, Claudia? I'm just trying to think what I do. It's, it's just all, I'm on a little bit of a property here as well, so there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of work to be done around the property itself. Um, I don't do as much as I used to. My, I, with my back and my neck these days, I struggle a little bit. But I, I do what I'm able to, and I have, as I said, I have wildlife that comes down to my property. Each day I feed, you know, kookaburras and carawongs and magpies, and, you know, they all come down. And I've got family. I do, you know, visit elderly friends of mine as well. That's always been, that's been part of my life for about 30, 30 odd years, um, you know, looking after older folks. So uh, that's uh, part of my life and hopefully will remain part of my life. Good for you, man. Yeah. And the last question, feel free to elaborate your, uh, your website, your, you know, the bad cap where, where listeners can buy your music, that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, I have a, I do have my own website, Claudio. It's uh, jimottaway.com. That's J-I-M-O-T-T-A-W-A-Y.com. And on that website, there's, you know, different pages for news and chart news and discography and where you can buy. And if you go to the discography, click on the album, it'll have generally all the links where people can, can buy either a physical album or, yeah. or, 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 or download. <clears throat> and I'm on all the um, band camp if they do a search under Jim Waterway and all the normal streaming sites like Spotify and iTunes and Amazon and uh, Deezer, Tidal, Pandora, uh, all, all those particular particular sites. And the, the CDs are physically available through, I do send to CD Baby and I think they sell through um, Amazon. But in Australia, there's um, Red Eye Records in Sydney and Rocking Horse Records in Brisbane. And in Scotland, uh, there is CD Services. And in America, there's the Lloyd Bart Productions. They, Lloyd has stocked some of my CDs uh, there as well. So they're on the web and um, and through some sites. But it's all, it's all on my web page if they go to jimottaway.com. Yeah. Well, Jim, it was very nice talking to you, man. Give us the world work, you know, you 30 years, 30 album, I want to see 50, and you have, you know, you have another 50 years in front of you, man. So keep on working hard, keep on producing good music, the stuff you like, and put it up there. And, uh, keep on doing well. You're doing, you're doing very well, man, you know. Thanks, Claudia. I very much, very much appreciate that. And as, as I've mentioned, I've got a lot of music that's been recorded. So if, if uh, you know, that they'll eventually get on to But if anything ever happens to me, I'll have to show my family where it is so they can release all the, you know. I will I might, release it. I might become famous. <laughs> yeah. I will. Well, hopefully we'll, one day I will, you know, I will end up meeting you personally. I, yeah. I, I need to make a trip to Australia. I've never been there. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, I was there. looking picture of Queensland and it's very beautiful, man. So I need, I need to go there with a family soon, man. Yes. I was just so uh, I think I posted on Facebook um, last night that I, I recently saw the the Elvis biopic, you know, the new film about Elvis. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was filmed here in my city here in the Gold Coast. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it's quite amazing because I, you know, I thought, God, that's got to be Graceland, but it wasn't. I mean, it's, it was all sets made here, so uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's a beautiful part of the world, and um, yeah, by all means. You get down here we encourage people to come to australia now that the all the borders are all opened up again but yeah thanks for the uh, the opportunity to talk to claudia it's, it's been a it's been a lot of fun and uh, i'm glad you you know like the music and uh, you know uh, we can get the get the word, word word out about it i very much appreciate it sure no problem thank you very much Jim. have a great great thanks, rest of your day today thank you thank you